This morning we chat to uh, Donald's daughter Ivanka. She speaks about growing up uh, with the surname Trump, visiting Ireland, and how she juggles work and raising two children. Um, Ivanka, thanks so much for being with us this morning because I know you're going out to play uh, a bit of golf um, <laughs> with your brothers. Are you a good golfer? I try very, very hard. I don't know if I'm a good golfer, but it's, uh, I'm learning more every day. <laughs> have, you, have you a handicap? I do. I'm, I'm somewhere in the mid-teens. So. Okay, that's not okay. so bad. I play a little bit. You know, it's amazing. We've increasingly over the past decade been just buying a tremendous number of, of great and, and iconic golf resorts or, or building them ourselves, like in the case in Scotland. Yet, with all the time that I spend at golf resorts, I don't actually find that much time to play. I'm normally working, and on the weekends I'm with the kids, so uh, today will be great. Getting out there will be so much fun. So, Dune Beg itself, as a golfer and as someone, as an executive within the Trump organization, did you have your eye on a Lynx course at this side of the world? We had been looking in Ireland for years. I mean, it's such a special place, and it's, I mean, just the landscape alone. I, I'm looking behind you out the window, and it's picturesque. It's just beautiful. So for years and years, we'd been looking um, to Ireland, especially spending a little bit more time in the region. I spent a lot of time in, in, in the UK. I spent a lot of time in, uh, in England, and, um, and obviously, recently, we've been spending a tremendous amount of time in Scotland. Um, so it was, it was natural. But we had hadn't found anything um, spectacular and we'd had our eyes on Dunebeg for a long time so this is it's great to be here and having made this happen. You started working for your dad actually um, within Trump Tower back in I think 2005 and I think a lot of people Ivanka would probably associate it, um, wealthy privileged children with kind of you know flitting around on the social scene and filling up the gossip columns but but you guys all got to work quite early didn't you? We did. I mean, as early as I can remember, you know, I would follow my parents around as, as they went about their days. So with my father, that meant to construction sites and sort of tailing him around as he, as he met with foremen and, and toured his various properties. With my mother, she was heavily involved in the management and the design. She managed several of our, of our great hotels. The Plaza Hotel in New York um, was one of the uh, properties that, that she was intimately involved in. So, you you know, from the earliest days, I, I did that and, and really learned through observation, just being around them. As I grew up, though, um, I began to intern. And I was a very prolific intern. <laughs> so I was, I did everything, everything from working on construction sites to working in investment banks um, and, and everything in between. You're, you're literally, your office is a couple of doors down from, from your dad and your brothers. How's that work? I mean, when you have the odd bit of a Barney about something and you're so close in the office. You know, it's interesting. Family business is, it's, I find that there's sort of a very binary outcome. They either work spectacularly well or they're a complete disaster. It's very rarely siblings like sort of get along, you know, or it's okay. So I think you have to be cognizant of that and, and you have to, despite it being your brothers, um, your father, you have to, you know, maintain a certain um, appropriateness and formality in the workplace. So obviously, as siblings, we speak um, our minds. We're incredibly candid. Um, that's one of the great things about working in a family business. We can really, you know, push back and push on each other. Um, but you know, it has to be done with respect. Otherwise, no screaming matches in the boardrooms. Well, there have been a few. <laughs> <laughs> Apprentice style <laughs> hair dryer maybe, treatment. Maybe, maybe a few. We actually, you know, we get along very well, and and we're all quite similar and quite different. We get to the same place in different ways. Uh, Brand Trump, Ivanka, it's, it's a macho, brawny, qu quite a masculine brand and it's quite a male dominated environment. As, as a businesswoman, uh, did you find that difficult? You must be surrounded by men, hardly any women for your work? Well, I think that's real estate development in general. So with the exception of on the sales and marketing side and finance and development, you really don't see that many females. Um, so that's something I sort of acclimated to, to early on. And I worked for other developers as, as I was training, as, uh, as I was learning right out of college. So I got quite accustomed to that. Have you ever encountered sexism along the way, dealing with men? Um, you know, I find that in America and in, in Europe, we're fortunate that 
this is not something we deal with as openly and as frequently as other places in the world, but there are definitely environments where we do business where it's highly unusual um, and perhaps a little off-putting for, for me to be a female in, in the context of a negotiation. Um, so yeah, I know I definitely have, but you know, it's, it's, it's all how you respond to these things. Um, and sometimes being a negotiator is knowing you're not the best person to negotiate. If somebody won't respond favorably to you, you're not serving your own interests by you know, continuing that line of dialogue. And that's why you know, my brothers and I work so well together. There's certain people I do much better with, um, and sometimes being a woman is, is an advantage. You take people off guard. Are, are you saying um, you employ female charms to disarm people? No, well, not female. Ch well, maybe. <laughs> um, no, but it, you know, when somebody is either um, unprepared, expecting less of you, I think that's a great advantage. So, you know, I think about that a lot. People say, does it bother you when people underestimate you? And I say, I welcome people to underestimate me. <laughs> You're a working mum and you have two very small children. Um, how does that fit? Obviously, there's a bit of life balance going on, balancing home and, and those negotiations you've been talking about. Yeah, it's total chaos. <laughs> it is total chaos. I've resigned myself to the fact that I'm not going to sleep for the next decade. So. Um, but having a two and a half year old and having a six month old, six month old uh, now son is um, it's incredible um, and it's you know my greatest joy so you know for me I people ask me a lot of times how I balance and and I find that balance is is something everyone wants to achieve balance in their life but balance is not something by and large one can plan for you know when you have children your child gets sick well there goes your balance you're not going into work that day or or um, you know in a professional context a big deal comes up and it requires a um, a lot of your attention for a short period of time you know I think rather than um, focus too heavily on balance which is largely unachievable mm -hmm. I, I really focus on priorities and and making sure that my priorities, my own priorities, are in line with how I want to live my life. You have a little girl, Arabella, and a little six-month-old baby boy. Is there a difference? It's hard to tell when they're so small between boys and girls, do you think? There is a difference. I see it. It's um, personality-wise. My daughter is so sweet, but she's very strong. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she's I wonder very where she gets that from. <laughs> Talking about negotiation, my goodness, this girl negotiates everything <laughs> and is quite skilled at it actually. I knew I was in trouble when she was one years old, barely. I mean, she basically just started stringing together sentences, so maybe maybe uh, one and a quarter. And um, and she, I, I tell her to clean her room. There were toys everywhere. And uh, she looks at me, she turns, she walks to the corner, she sits down, and she says, well, maybe later, Mom. I'll give myself a timeout instead. <laughs> I'm like, oh, no, I don't even have a response to that. I'm like, she just put herself in timeout. <laughs> so, you know, she is um, precocious, um, and I'm going to have my hands full with her, whereas Joseph so far, and granted he's only six months, he... Um, He's just so happy. Whereas Arabella will make you work for the laugh. You know, Joseph's just be. You know, I walk into his room in the morning, and I'm shocked that he'll. You know, he'll be awake sometimes, but he's just looking and smiling and giggling, and so he's a good little boy. Um, are you planning more? You you have two. Are you planning more? Am I allowed to ask you? Um, I would love to have three. Um, my husband would love to have four. So we'll see where we end up. I think it'll be three. <laughs> three is a lot. Two is a one is a lot. So. Yeah. I mean, it's, um, but it's so amazing. I mean, I love it. I love it so much. Are you the boss in your own house? If no, I definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> Arabella is. <laughs> Definitely not. I've, I've now officially been demoted to, I think, last rung. Um, no, I think, um, you know, I'm, I'm not an overly permissive parent. I think I'm quite, um, I think I'm quite strict. My mother um, was from Eastern Europe. She didn't sort of tolerate uh, um, kids being fresh or, or disrespectful. But, you know, it's very hard. These kids are good at, at, at getting under your skin. So Arabella's um, um, very good at testing me. And it's, it's, it is so tempting as, as a working mom to come home and indulge them a, let, a little bit. But are you concerned, though, about your reputation because someone like you 
would be in the spotlight given half the chance of the media g could be in your house and in your business all of the time so does it concern you what you what you see on social media or what people write about you or or twitter or anything like that well i think you know early on i developed quite a callous um to the opinions of others ultimately you know, I, I live in a way that I would never want my children to be embarrassed of something their mother did. So, you know, first and foremost, I, I'm, you know, hopefully not doing things that would be all that interesting to um, to somebody from, from a scandal perspective. <laughs> um, but, you know, I think, I think you just have to, at some point you just have to live and you have to drown out the noise. You know, I grew up in, in a climate where, you know, from when I was 14 years old, people um, would say, well, you know, I, I, I wonder what she would ever accomplish if it wasn't for her last name. And, um, you know, would she ever be able to, uh, to, to achieve great things if, if she didn't have the name Trump? And the reality is there's no point fighting that because I myself don't have an answer. Um, I know I was given a tremendous advantage. I have a name that is globally recognized, but it's what I do with it. Um, and, and, you know, it's how hard I work in my own life. So, you know, fighting that is... Um, is a zero sum game. But you, you must always get a table when you when you ring up a restaurant and go, it's See? for Ivanka Trump for two. <laughs> I'm sure you never See, no one are, ever says no. There are a lot of advantages. <laughs> it you know, it bothers me so much when you hear um, celebrities or well known people complaining um, about being celebrities, complaining even look the paparazzi is it's awful when you have your children and, and, and certainly when they're they invade your space. But the amount of time most people spend soliciting media attention only to complain about it when it's inconvenient is Mm -hmm. you do, know. do you know a lot of those guys, the A-listers in Hollywood? You must know all these people. Do you know Kim Kardashian, for example? I do. What I do. She like? Um, she's actually lovely, so she's she's very nice. She was on The Apprentice um, one season, and and I just saw her at the Met Ball a couple of weeks ago. Mm -hmm. So she's, she's I've never I've never had anything but a nice experience with her. She has a lot of media attention around her. A tremendous amount. Yeah. Yes, uh, um, you know she is definitely an example of somebody who probably just cannot avoid it. Oh, okay. Uh, finally, Ivan Ivanka, um, Ireland. The welcome you got yesterday. That was something special, wasn't it? Coming out those steps. It, it was almost like a presidential visit. I thought it is unbelievable. I mean, I, I've only been here once before, um, but I just love it. I just love it. And you know, one of one of the women who helped raise me, actually both of the women who helped raise me, but um, uh, they came from Ireland. Okay. So. Um, I came back with um, with one of them to to visit the hometown of, of the other after she passed, and uh, that was my last time in Ireland. So to be back here is um, so meaningful for me, and and I just love it. Did you have a pint of the black stuff? Or are you a non-drinker like your dad? I have not yet, but I, I will remedy that okay. <laughs> before right. I leave. We'll organize it. Listen, best of luck. Um, hope that natural swing uh, goes well for you today, and you beat those brothers of yours on the course. I'm going to need it with the wind out there. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Ivanka Trump, for talking to us today. Thank, Thank you. you. What a very cool go. girl. Very You're just like, very chill, very down to earth. I think I like her a lot more than I like her father. I know you were just saying that. I don't, I, I don't dislike him straight away. You know those things that are on the front of doors? What are they called? What do you mean? Gargoyles? Do no, door. Oh, do oh. <laughs> <laughs> the penny will drop eventually. I'm back Actually, to my know brain isn't working. You, you know what? I'm, uh, but I'd say he made them all. You can see it. He made them all work. Like oh. they could have all just swanned around the world and never worked and taken all the money because mm. he's worth billions and they have all worked hard, which I, I like. I like that. I don't that. think that was a, a possibility with either him or with the mother. No. I think yeah. uh, Ivana I like was good work, like, work, work ethic. ethic. Do you know what? I'd love to ask her, did she ever feel like going up to him and going, Ooh, to We were just hair. saying, wouldn't you love to mess his hair up? <laughs> but did you see when he got out of the plane, right? Her hair has been blown all over the place like it's a gale force wind. His didn't move. I don't know, it's just a trick of the light. Colette did try, she, she brought down a, um, um, actually it was very funny. She, what did she do? She actually got Jackie Healy Ray. <laughs> oh, she brought a cap with and her. And Donald Trump into the same sentence. <laughs> <laughs> which I thought was, was brilliant, subversive journalism. She gave him a cap, but he yeah. didn't put it on because no, he was he wearing another cap already. He wasn't biting. He wasn't, he wasn't um, unveiling the... Yes, it's great for Doombeg. It's great for Ireland. She seemed like a very cool... Well, girl, no, there's a big caveat with that. Um, 
Well, you hope it is, but uh, and he talked about all the millions he's putting in and all the rest of it, but he bought the place for a song. And then about two days after his, uh, his, his visit, there was all this talk about how he'd like to populate the place with Jobsbridge people. So, you know, you would like to hope that there will be lots of employment and that they will get paid properly and fairly and that the profits will trickle down to the people who live there. Uh, as opposed to, you know, being hived off to some corporate headquarters somewhere in the Bahamas. Let's go with the hope. Let's yeah, be optimistic. But you know, look where that go got on. us. Look where that got us. No, we were just foolish then. Yeah. We need to be optimistic as well. Now, coming up after the break, Edward Hayden.